Hmm. Hi everyone, Jerry Shields here, and today I am going to cover a few points about the course designer in 2K21 uh, that have come up in a few of the questions on my YouTube channel. And uh, some of the things I want to cover today are uh, a little bit about how the different brushes use for flattening, uh, raising, lowering things, and also maybe building slopes up and down hills. And uh, the other thing that I'm going to cover is also a little bit about surfaces, you know, mulches, cart paths, different types of surfaces. Uh, some you might not realize that you're not stuck with the default ones that are in your theme, that you can uh, customize that. I'm going to show you how to do that today. And then I'm also going to show a little bit about, uh, you know, buildings and features and trees and, and the different uh, items that you can add to your golf course because there is a few tricks with that that I'll show you that make things easier. So I'm going to throw this in as the, the next lesson in my series of lessons on building a uh, golf course uh, because we're just about to hit, uh, you know, we had built this hole here in the last lesson and we we're about to add the finer details. But to do the finer details, you kind of need to know um, how to use some of the tools in the game. So so that's my plan for today is to give you an idea how all that works. So, so let's start with sculpting first. Uh, this is a big one and it'll make a difference on your golf course. Um, under sculpt land, there are two major items that I will use here. One is landscape flatten and one is landscape raise. Now think of flattening as something you get out a, a rolling pin and you're just flattening the features down towards everything being the same height. So that's what flatten does. Where raise just takes whatever is in the area that you have the brush over and it'll lift it. And I'll show you a little bit about how those two things work. So, so I'll go to the raise first. And the different brushes are also important. Um, this is a pretty harsh butt brush here. You can see that if I uh, uh, was to choose that brush and, and raise things, you would have a pretty steep uh, side to your your feature. So if I go out and we go to this brush, it's got a little more fuzz on the edge and you can see it's a little more taper, but still pretty extreme. I would I would only use this brush if I was creating, a, say, a flat T-deck on uh, the flattened part, but for raise, I probably wouldn't use it. This is a handy one in the raise section because it creates kind of these nice little mounds. And as long as you don't overdo it, as you can see, it creates this nice little undulation and these are kind of nice to add in and around a green or, or lifting an area, say uh, I wanted to raise an area beside a T-deck, for example, uh, in this little area here, it drops off pretty fast. You can see that I can just click my way through there and just kind of go at uh, little di different intervals and, and, s and I can look down lower at it. And the angle you look at things when you're building is also pretty key. You can see that'd be a little too high right there. So I can just take that down and and just put a little bit of elevation. You can see right off the bat, I'm doing a little bit of flattening because I'm raising, lowering uh, the turf to, to the height that I, I want to make it look right. So so that's how you use the raise and lower. And the last one that you would consider using, at least myself, will be this one here. If you're just working on turf, uh, if you make this brush bigger or lower, I can go to an area on the course and, and I can make it as big as I want. You can see some really big changes. Say you want to raise or lower a very large area of the, of the golf course. I say I want to create a deep ravine beside this hole. I just drop this sucker down, you know, down. It says down 100 feet, but it's not going to go 100 feet. It's just going to average everything. Uh, but you can see that's going to create a pretty big uh, ravine there. And when you, when you lower something, you see water. It means that you've gone below the water table on your course. So just be mindful of that. that if you've got some low areas on your course, that... that uh, that you need to start from that point and work up in a way because you won't be able to lower, say you want to build a deep bunker on a hole near the water, uh, you're going to create, uh, you know, you're going to create a bunker full of water is all you're going to do because you have that limitation. Just, so just keep that in mind and you can go back in now and you can see that I've created this little deep little area beside the hole and, and you can see it's clearly not a hundred foot drop like it said on the brush, but it uh, averaged it down. It might have dropped 20, 30 feet. So that's the raised lower feature and how I would use it. The other thing I might do is say I had some features at a, a green site and I wanted to take the entire green complex and lift it up. So I might, you know, in that case, I don't need bunkers, but if you had features, you had mounds, and you wanted to simply take that green site and lift it up, then you would you see how everything moves up there. It's not flattening anything. If you use the same brush on the flatten, feature, it would flatten everything inside that circle, but this just simply lifts it exactly what it's telling you. So say I want to raise this green site up about 15 feet, seven, let's go 17 feet, press the button, 
and you can see now that I've got uh, that entire green site lifted back up 15 feet. I may have to do a little bit of blending and shaping around the edge of the green where the edge of the fudgy, fuzzy brush was, but all in all, um, it would just raise and lower. So raise and lower um, on the landscape raise takes all the features inside that little uh, perimeter of that circle, the diameter of the circle, and uh, raises everything and lowers everything. It doesn't flatten anything. So the flattened one, if I took the exact same brush and I went over this green, so take a look at this green. You can see there's a lot of slope on it. So when I use the raise and lower, that slope would stay on that green. But if I go and I now use the flattened feature with the same brush, we've now got a flat green. So you can really see the difference and you can see this bizarre looking mountain I've created. I'm going to undo that. And so that's how the flatten works. So, so I would use this tool if I was going to flatten a T deck, for example. Uh, first off, I want to get it back to zero. I would zoom in. I'd make sure that the interior of the circle is totally over my deck in this situation. Height is zero. So say I want to lift this deck by just a little bit from the surrounding turf. I just give it a little bit of height there, maybe up to a foot. Click the button. And you can see now when we look at this T deck, it is perfectly flat. It tapers off nicely on the edges, and that's how you do that. Um, and then you would just uh, raise uh, whatever decks you'd like, or your green sites, or whatever you'd like to do. And inside that circle, it'll flatten it as well as raise it, whereas the rays will only raise all the features that are inside the circle. So that's the big difference. When I'm doing large scale bulldozer work and I'm shaping things, I'm using the rays lower. And when I'm doing the finer details and sloping mounds around greens and bunkers and, and even around T-decks, then that's how I'll use the landscape flattened to get things to really smooth out. Uh, now, the flattened brush that you'll probably use the most will actually be this fuzzy brush here. This one does a lot of really good flattening. So you can see there beside the green, I've got a little bit of a slope there that's a little unrealistic. So I'm just going to go up here and use my little brush. And you can either click it one time for each area, which I, I do a lot of, or you can you can hold it down and just do a circle. So I'll try that as well. You can see how it flattens all that out. And flatten, each time you do it, it'll flatten a little more. So you've got a little bit of shape still to this this area of turf around the green. Um, and, and if you keep on doing it, it'll totally flatten it. Uh, or you can just do it once or move over it and hold down the button, which is what I just did there. So you can see now we've got a nice progression there. There's still a little bit of uh, one here that I, I think is a little unrealistic, so I'm just going to run through this little gully. And uh, there you go, and that'll flatten things out. Now that uh, that green's been raised 15 feet, and we have kind of leveled out the little area that was raised around, and, and now it looks very natural when you look into there. It doesn't look like we have done anything there that it was naturally like that the whole time. So that's how you do your raise and flatten. And, and very similar in the bunkers, I would usually go to a bunker, and uh, I, there's two tactics. I would use the flatten. I would go in, I would make my brush smaller, I would, uh, well first off, if you just go to your bunker and you just flatten it to zero, it'll dip it a little bit, but if you really want to put a, you know, a nice little bit of shape to your bunker, I just lowered it down, you can see now my bunker has a little bit of shape to it, uh, I can do that again, I can make the circle smaller, I can move up, move up the face of the bunker if I wanted to pull it down a little bit more. You know, and so you just kind of move around and uh, do whatever looks right. If you don't like it, you hit the undo button and it goes back and and say that was too much of a slope like I, I think that last one was. I go back in here and I can touch it up. And then if I want to, say, raise some mounds around a bunker, then the way I would do that is to go and use that tool that wants a little bit of a circle. I would raise it, and now I'm going to raise some mounds around this bunker and I like looking from the side at things because I can see if it looks realistic or not and how it blends in and kind of get the look that I'm looking for. I want this nose to come up a little bit here. See if I can make that happen. Might take a couple raises. A little bit aggressive so I can lower that down and uh, raise things up so you can you can kind of see how this works and it's a, it does take some practice I'm not gonna kid you that it's not an instantaneous thing that you're gonna have to mess with things a little bit to, to get used to it now another useful feature for this brush here for the raise and lower I didn't mention it but one handy thing is if you're doing some large scale work and you want a nice slope into something say I want to slope away from this green if I was to take this and make it really large and then I was to drop this down, what it does is that fuzzy blue area from the center circle out to that green, for example, 
it creates a nice little slope. And if I did that all the way around the green, I would get this nice, gentle, flowing slope away from the green. So and if I go back here and look, you can see now that we've got a slope going down to this little bit of a lower area on the green. And that's how you create yourself a raised green with the slope running off of the green. So you just remember, though, every time you do adjustments around a green, if you, even if you don't think you're touching the green, you're likely going to impact the slope of your green. So that, that's why I do my shaping of my greens as the very last feature, sometimes even after planting, because I want to make sure the greens are exactly what I want. But that's how to use all those little brushes uh, for that type of thing. Um, and the only other thing I use on this sculpt land menu often is uh, this clear generated objects there. I can go in and, and with that I can go in and if I don't like some of the plantings around the hole, I simply go in there and it takes away these randomly generated trees. So that's one thing I do and I use that more than some people because some people I've heard actually don't create the course with any trees and they add them back in. I do it the opposite way because I like to tie my hat to a couple of trees and use them for shaping and the look of the, like look at this hole here, right? look at this tree on the left side of the fairway. That's for me to plant three trees like that, I probably wouldn't do that. But with the random feature, it kind of looks natural. That's the nice thing about the, the, the random feature of, of the trees. So the next thing I am going to touch on will be, let's quickly go to the surfaces. It creates a little bit of confusion because the top ones are pretty obvious. Bunkers through heavy rough, that's that's pretty obvious. You just create a, a brush or a spline and you fill it in and you can get it. These surfaces, one, two, three, they are customized to whatever you want, but it doesn't appear that way when the game starts. So let's go to surface one and create a brush. And what I'm going to do is create all three surfaces for you here. So there's surface one. Let's see what it is. And this, so this one is like a light colored asphalt cart path. And let's go to surface number two. It is mulch. And then we're going to go to surface number three. And it is, show us. Oh, more asphalt. So you have two asphalt and a mulch. And, and say you don't want that. Like, for example, I might want a nice looking, um, you know, interlocking brick for one of them, a mulch for another one, and an asphalt for another one. So say I want my first one to be um, my mulch, for example. So what I'm going to do is I am going to, and this is the only way I found to do it. You can't go into the settings and do it. You have to actually put down a surface and modify it. So surface number one was the first one. I'm going to go to, sorry. You have to get it, you have to highlight it. There we go. Surface number one. When you can move over it and it gets highlighted and look down, you can see surface number one at the bottom of the menu. Click that, go to texture, and now you can create whatever you want. So I'm going to create this light colored mulch. Now, whenever you go in and create and add surface number one, it's going to be the light colored mulch that we've changed it that is no longer that pavement. So there you go. So then, say I want to make the next one interlocking brick. I want all my cart paths to be interlocking brick. I think I did that with Rattlesnake Gulch. So what I'm going to do is go back and highlight it. Surface number two pops up at the bottom. I'm going to go to Texture. And there are three pages of this. There's a lot of options. You can really customize your course. And some of you don't realize you can do all this this, uh, this type of stuff. So there's a look at interlocking brick right there. There you go. When I zoom in, you can see that's a nice interlocking brick feature. It looks really nice on cart paths, especially in that desert theme. And then the last one, if I wanted to, I could go back and I could modify this surface. Say I don't like the color of this cart path and I want it darker. I want it some stone or uh, more like pavement, kind of a dark color. So there we go. And now I've got a, a cart path that is uh, darker. So we've now changed our three defaults. So now you know when you're going in and building your course. If you always use one, you're going to get your mulch. Number two is going to be your interlocking brick. And number three will be your asphalt. So, so that's how to use the surfaces and customize them. And I said a lot of people don't realize that they're not stuck with the defaults. Even though it appears there is because there's no settings for it, you can change them and then they'll stay that way for the rest of the game. You only get three, but it, uh, it works for you. So the last thing I wanted to talk about was creating objects. And the first thing I'm just going to touch on real fast is that with trees, there are now 33 pages of trees. And if you are going to go through and plant trees and have to go through 33 pages looking for the right trees, you're going to lose your mind. I guarantee it. So what you, if you look over on the controls menu, if you see the letter Y on my controller, show theme objects. If I push that once, it's only going to give me the trees that are typically in this theme. But I don't, I don't really want to be restricted to the theme. That's kind of the old school way of building courses. I want to be at least see all the trees that I've chosen already so far in my course. So if I press that button one more time, this is trees placed. So you can see that I have placed 
um, some tropical trees, some elm. So these are the four that I've used. And every time I go and choose another tree, say I want a nice big oak or a big maple or a nice birch, then as long as I use it once on the course, it'll show up on this menu here. So if you want to go back and use those same type of trees now and then, you don't have to go through 33 pages of trees. So I, I advise you to make use of that feature. It's going to save you a lot of time. The next thing I wanted to show you was, um, of course, the, the clubhouses. They didn't add any new clubhouses, so we're kind of stuck with it the way it is. But let's put this clubhouse right here in the middle of the fairway just to show what you can do with it. So I can put that clubhouse there. And then if I wanted to, I can add features to this. So don't be afraid to kind of customize things. Um, for example, you can add more buildings to it if you really wanted to. Um, see, I go find myself something that looks interesting. I may want to tack on the side. Let's, uh, I've done this in the clubhouse already. You know, I can, I can build this little feature on the side, this little add-on, and you can kind of line up your roof lines and see if it would look okay. And, and this one looks kind of goofy because it doesn't match perfectly. You can every, even bury the feature farther inside. Say I want that roof line to match up perfect. Uh, I could do that type of thing, and you can see how we get this little funny little pedestal look, and eh, it looks kind of <laughs> kind of interesting actually at the front. I'm gonna keep that, maybe even go with that symmetrically on the other side, just to to give that a try. So I'm gonna put that out over here again, much like the other side, and just make sure I match it up. And I think I have it out a little farther. I need to get a little more square. And you can see, oh, well, the idea is just to put it in there. So I can throw that in there. And now I've got these funny little add-ons to the side. I can put things up top. I can do whatever I want. You can even add more detail to it with some odd little features. For example, say I want to use some brickwork on this. So that brick matches up good with that brick. And say I want stone pillars at the entranceway uh, to make this look a little more impressive. So I'm going to choose this tallest one I can find, which is this one. I'm going to zoom in, and I'm going to get this just right up against that wall it's going to touch the overhang so i am going to do i want it there or do i want it inside that wooden feature i'm going to go inside it uh, i'm a little too far back and a little too far over <laughs> that'll do it there i'm going to click that in there and then i'm going to go up and touch let's see if i get that square there we go touch that roof and you can see now how I am able to add a little bit of detail to this clubhouse something that isn't there in the default looking clubhouse and uh, throw that up there so right off the bat I've got a, a something a little bit different on it and if, if I wanted to I could do that all over the place and make a nice little uh, brick front to it I could also uh, you know I've used this feature for adding uh, chimneys on roofs. So there we go. Now we've, we've added a stone chimney on the top of that clubhouse that isn't there naturally. So don't be afraid to add little features here and there. Um, the clubhouses, there aren't a lot of them, so um, you're kind of forced to do that type of thing. And the other thing is uh, equipment. Um, and just keep in mind that if you're doing course equipment, that if you place something somewhere on a funny slope, it's going to look odd. See how my cart path looks like it is doing a bit of a wheelie there? You can pl place your cart path and make a wheelie, or you could take it and you could use the advanced edit. And you can see how we can rotate our cart now, and we can make it look like it actually belongs in there, like it's doing a bit of a rally down the hill. And there we go. That looks more realistic if you're putting that cart path in that bunker for some reason. So that's another thing to do. And the last thing I want to cover today is leveling surfaces or creating slopes when you're using the level brush and that sounds counterintuitive and it's a little more complex and it takes some practice but i guarantee you can do it too what i'm going to do though is i'm going to use it on a road uh, on a slope somewhere and you'll see how this really works so i'm going to go in i'm going to create my my surface i'm going to create my interlocking brick and then i'm going to spline it and i'm just going to run down this hill My interlocking brick so there's my hill and when I go in and look at it my cart path is all over the place there's a few little bumps turns dips so here's the trick and when you get used to this you'll really be able to pull your courses together and make them look really good so go to sculpt land go to flatten go to that fuzzy brush and get it roughly just a little bit bigger than that 
that cart path. I think we're pretty good. You don't want it too small, but I think something like that. So I'm going to start just before the cart path and click once, and I'm going to move forward and keep an eye on that. See how you can see how it looks like it slopes down, and you kind of reach a sweet spot of where you may want that slope to be. So in this case, uh, that slope would be right about there. And you can see we're using the flatten, but we're actually going downhill with this. So now we're reaching the uphill portion. It came down for a little bit. Now we're going uphill, and it's the same concept. Just keep moving a little bit at a time, and you'll see things flatten out, and now we're going up a slope. So we just went down and up, but we took all the craziness out of that slope, and we are actually leveling this cart path out quite nicely as we go. So it's kind of a picture of having yourself a little small little dozer, and you're just zipping along, just slowly pushing the dirt in front of you. I've, I've gone uphill and downhill. To me, it doesn't really matter. Uh, some people say they just like going downhill. And you can see see that mound. I'm, I'm just, see, I want to I get it to go down a little faster, so I just move the cursor a little farther. If I pull back, I'm going to keep going uphill, but I want to transition to downhill, so I moved it down a little farther. And now we are heading down the hill. And, and you just kind of eye it up and see what looks right. You know, to that, I, that looks like a funny little mound there. So I, I'm stuck kind of right there. And then each time I go, I can make it look a little more like I want to see that slope playing out. And it is, there is a bit of touch and feel to it. But when you get this down, you can do it on large scale with fairways. You can do it on cart paths. You can do it on approaches to greens. And uh, it comes together really nice. And, and you can see here, and I would say this is one of the most important things I ever learned in course design is how to do this because it opened up a world of, slopes and and features that i couldn't otherwise figure out how to do so i'm hoping that it's as helpful to you as it is to me and you can see now you know we're, we've gone as far as i really need to go we go back and look at that that's a big difference and if you and you could go back and you can do it all over again if you choose to and you'll even flatten it out a little bit more and take a few more of the dips you can still it's still a couple little dips here and there but nothing too bad that i wouldn't be afraid to publish especially for a cart path uh, that goes by a, a green or a couple of t sites and and uh, it works really well. So, so that's how you do slopes. And if you're going to do an entire fairway, well, then obviously the only difference is scale, right? And you just open up and you uh, start going down a fairway. Oh, we got a fairway here. Somewhere around here we've got a fairway. I think we got an old fairway tucked up in the hills here, right over here. So we've got this area here. And say I want to go up this whole ravine. I just make it nice and big and I just click, click. And if I want to get in a little tighter and see how I'm doing things, you can see that we are slowly pushing things. In this example, I'm going uphill. But look how that is coming together, and we are getting the slope that we want up the hill. we got a little bit of a pause here, like a step. And then it's going to start sloping up again as we take the dog leg to the left. And it's, the secret is just moving a little bit at a time and just keeping an eye on how you see the turf adjusting in that fuzzy blue area until it kind of looks the way you want for the slope you want and you just keep on running that up there and that's how you get a nice smooth sloping surface without having to sit there and try to raise and lower every piece of it so you can see uh we, we've moved that out quite a bit and we could go back all over and do it again you can also try holding down the button and doing it i've tried that but i, I don't find it as exact and i have to go back and fix it i'll just do it here this is me holding the button and just running up that slope so there you go. So it's smoothed out even more. That didn't that wouldn't didn't work too bad, but I prefer the step by step method myself. I have a little more control. So those are a few tips that will definitely help you as we move farther into the tutorial and figuring out how to build a golf course. So um, like I said, practice is the big thing. It's taken me months and months uh, to figure out how these brushes work and how to best use them to get the look I want. Once you get this down, then it is definitely a skill, and it's skill that can be very helpful in all the courses you build from that point on. So, so I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Uh, subscribe if you liked it. You can give me a like as well, or even if you have any more questions or future tutor tutorials that would be helpful, uh, then, uh, then let me know in the comment section. I'll, I'll see what I can do for you. Take care, and have a good day. Bye for now.